Hello, how's it going? And welcome to another episode of Bound to Talk Football. He's Paul Erich. I'm Blake Walker. We're back for our midweek episode. It's coming out on October 4th. It's October 3rd. It's only 11 o'clock at night. This is earlier than Paul and I usually record our podcasts. Yeah. Uh, I am here in my apartment. I'm going to turn this light off because it adds a little bit extra shadow. Paul is in the Smurf world of his apartment, all blue. Yep. Love to see it. <laughs> Rock and blue today. Yeah, there you go. Even though I'm so, happy. Twins won. Yeah, Paul's got his set up. It's a good Tuesday. Weather's cooling down a little bit. You and I were just saying before we hopped on, it's going to be cool this weekend. High of like 60 on Friday. Mm -hmm. Should be fun. And then it warms back up a little bit. But I'll appreciate the 60s when we have them. But I'm excited for, <clears throat> excuse me, excited for cool weather. That is for sure. We got a different kind of setup here for the podcast today, tonight, whenever you're listening. RPI rankings came out on Monday. We are going to go through the RPI in 5A, 4A, 3A, give our thoughts, because we have thoughts, but at yeah. the same time, we'll give you our thoughts, but we have reasons, and we're not freaking out. I'm, We can freak out, but it's like, there's reasons why we shouldn't freak out. And then yeah. the rankings came out for 2A, 1A, A, and 8-player, so we'll go over those as well. We put a thing out for questions. People gave us questions, but all the questions were about the games this week. Well, we're going to talk about the games this week on Friday on our preview. So I really didn't want to toss in whatever. We'll also have our upset of the week at the very end of the episode, which I completely forgot about until I just said it. It's a yeah. good thing that I have mine off the top of my head. But oh, what the we'll, <laughs> we'll roll with it as we go throughout. But we'll let Paul figure that out as the podcast goes on. We'll start out with the RPI, shall we? Let's start with the very top. We'll start at Class 5A. The RPI dropped. Here's how it works. 16 teams make it. You got to reach the cutoff. Top 16 is the big one. And then just kind of whoever else fits in wherever. In 4A and 3A, we'll talk about that when we get there. 4A and 3A gets a little kind of mucky when it comes to that. But 5A, it's pretty simple. Top 16 make it. Usually it's like a normal bracket. One will play the 16, two will play the, unless it's geography, which geography doesn't seem to be a big thing in 5a because nobody's out west it's pretty much just east and central paul no surprise southeast polk and dowling catholic are at the top southeast polk yep. just a smidge better i the rpi number is 0. 0.7160 dowling's is 0. 0.7122 what does that is it looks like opponent record barely Southeast Polk's yeah. opponents are 30 and 24. Dowling's opponents are 29 and 25. Bentendorf is at number three. How do you feel about Bentendorf being number three, Paul? Um, Indifferent. I mean, I knew they'd be up there because of their high record to start, but if they fall back a little bit, it's expected. I mean, once again, we'll probably say this about 20 times this episode, but this stuff evens out pretty quickly. Like, yeah. You look at it initially, and everyone gets all upset usually, but then it just evens out pretty quick. So that is one thing that I – thank you for saying that. We're, we're, you're right. It, it's week six. <laughs> yeah. This will figure itself out. Most of the time, the top teams will get in. The best 16 teams will get in. Mm -hmm. The fight toward the cutoff is really where things get interesting because by week eight or nine, I really don't care about the top 12, 11. Yeah. I care about what's around the cutoff and the cutoff's the fun part, but the, this stuff is really interesting. So Bentendorf set three good opponent record. I'll give them that 31 and 23. Very nice start to the season. They have a win over number four, Pleasant Valley. Pleasant Valley's at four. I like that. Waukee at five. I think Waukee's in a really good spot. Waukee could lose this week to Southeast Polk. And that's, I don't think they'd move. Do you think they'd move? No, probably not, dude, because their opponent record will boost up. Yeah. So, yeah, they're looking good. It sits nicely for Waukee. They're a phenomenal team. Beckett Baker has been good. I'm excited for that game. Friday night. Keep an I, I, Again, this isn't a preview episode, but I get to call that game. I don't think Southeast Polk's going to sleepwalk into that thing as much as people think they will. I think last week was a wake-up for Southeast yeah. Polk. Cedar Rapids Kennedy at six. I think their ceiling is high. I, I I think Kennedy just keeps moving up. I think they have a chance at getting top four. Yeah. 
they're gonna they have a really good chance of winning out potentially they do have cedar falls but yeah that's the that's the other one we'll talk about cedar falls here in a little bit ankeny at seven the hawks what a weird it's just weird like i don't think we expected like a down down year and it's not a down year your only losses are to the top two teams at the front but i don't know it's just a weird like number seven and ankeny could finish top five yeah if i was an ankeny fan i would have been ecstatic <laughs> with these releases because like they can expect almost to go seven and two this year and they're already top seven now i will ask you let's set your ankeny bias aside are they more are they would they be a more vulnerable higher seed Yes. Yeah, I think so, too. I think it would better suit them if they were the lower seed <laughs> going in. But because they're a higher seed, I just feel like, yes, they're a little bit more vulnerable. They're not what they were last year. They're not going to go in as that underdog that they – or Valley was last year. So, yeah, kind of how it shakes out. Walkie Northwest at number eight, I think they'll only go up. Their schedule isn't great the rest of the way, so they should be able to get through. I think Walkie Northwest will be around that eight seven nine spot i don't think yeah anything shifts they do have centennial okay do have centennial that's really the big Which, oh this has been like a big playoff game in the past almost at this point they all, i feel like they always play late in the season it's like a big matchup because they're both kind of the same type of team feels like almost every year but this year it feels like centennial's a little bit better but if i'm the top of the bracket centennial i don't want centennial to lose that game because <laughs> yeah. centennial would have four losses going into the playoffs they'd be literally one of the 16th 15th or 14th teams if i'm southeast polk dowling or we think either pv or walkie i do not want to face Hank centennial yeah centennial that's, would be a scary for sure yeah. that's that's a t tough spot to be in Urbandale at 9, Hempstead at 10, and Prairie at 11. Paul, not just saying because they're Eastern Iowa teams, but this one got people pretty upset, mostly because of the strength of schedule. Urbandale, 23-31 and 31 opponent record, 24-30 opponent record for Hempstead. I guess Prairie, who is 3-3, three and 3, the best 3-3 three and three team in the state, according to the RPI, 32-22. and 22. Hempstead and Urbandale, it gets tricky. I think these two teams might be fighting at the cutoff. Yeah, I mean... That's what I'd say. I don't even I, – I see a hard path for Urban to make it. Hempstead hard. gets Kennedy on Thursday night this week, so that's – I hate to say it. That's probably going to be a loss, so I'll bump him back. Urban has got at Dowling, at Johnston, and Yeah. So that is quite the road you're going to have to carry. And then Hempstead, you said they have Kennedy. On Thursday night. Yep, on Thursday night. And then they also have – Oh, winnable. Davenport West and Davenport Central. Speaking of Davenport West, right there, number 12. This is a team that was undefeated last year. I, I'd have to go back. I wonder where they were in the first RPI of last year. I know. I remember they were like, I think it was 6-0. and Yeah, them. but I can't remember if they – I don't think they were like near five, the top. Five. Yeah, but number 12, 4-2 record. 22 and 32. Again, the RPI is definitely looking at you only have two losses. That's not bad. <laughs> you know, it's not like they're going to jump a three and three team over most four and two teams. The big one I think everybody was surprised about Centennial is at 13th, three and three record, 32 and 22. The, if they lose to Northwest, things maybe get interesting. I don't think they do. I think no matter what Northwest is in, just because of the strength of their schedule, the Ankeny loss doesn't look like a bad loss they might in their mind think they should have won and they probably should have won but it's not it's not set up badly i think centennial i don't think will be better than 10th but that's exactly where they want them in a way <laughs> yeah rose they got roosevelt walking northwest and then urbandale so there's a path for three and other Boy, sure. what a dangerous team that would be outside the top 10 i hate hating on walking northwest though <laughs> yeah like, i do too i think <laughs> They're a good team. I they are. They're just fundamentally sound. But yeah, it's just you just don't know, man. You just don't know. But I don't know. It sets up interesting enough. So yeah. number fourteen, Linmar, twenty eight and twenty six, decent season despite dealing with injuries. Iowa City West is in at fifteenth, above Iowa City High, who Iowa City High beat and has the same record. And then Waterloo West. 
with the worst win loss record besides or opponent record besides Cedar Rapids Jefferson comes in at number 16 Waterloo West 19 and 35 opponent record so that's your cutoff if the playoffs started today Waterloo West would be in anything stand out about that one um for Waterloo West I'm assuming or those three teams I named how about okay Linmar Iowa City West Waterloo West anything stand out Linmar I'm happy for because they just got screwed over this year, and that was a big wing. It's Muscatine. They do have Davenport West coming up, which I think they could win. And then, yeah, they definitely can win that. What am I talking about? Because Davenport West lost to Muscatine. Um, then they have Iowa City High and PB, so they're two tough games to round out their schedule, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, opponent schedule will probably look good for them, the yep. opponent record, but um, – for them, I'd be a little confident being 14. It's scary. You have to win this week, obviously. And then um, if you still win those last two, I think you're for sure in. Yeah. That would be a great season for Lenmar. As for Iowa City West, I'm a little almost surprised. I feel like they've been losing. Yeah. I, I'm a little bit on there as well. I think them and Iowa City High could honestly have flip-flopped in a way. Yeah. Um, Cedar Rapids, Washington, they should win. PV and Prairie, that's scary. If they Iowa City West? Them, yeah, this is Iowa yeah. City West, by the way. Yeah. Um, if they pull it out against Prairie, there you go. Right in. Which, I mean, I wouldn't have thought. I thought they'd be lower. Yeah. First one out, Cedar Rapids, or excuse me, Cedar Falls. I don't think they sit here. I think Cedar Falls gets in. Does their schedule easy up a little bit? <laughs> I just feel like they've played. Yeah, they've played. I mean, listen to the schedule. I know don't want to just ramble about seven or six games here, but Prairie, Johnson, Centennial, Iowa City, Liberty, Linmar, PV. So they're not a single guaranteed win there. They do have Dubuque Senior now, then they have Kennedy, and then they have De- Davenport West. So could go five and four. This reminds me of the Walking or West teams. Yeah. It, it, like, good. They're, the, they're the Walking or West of the East. You are absolutely right. That Kennedy oh. game could be make or break, but I think they could sneak in at five and four. If Johnston gets better, that's another thing. If Johnston gets better, that's a good win. So they need Johnston to keep the yeah. train rolling. And then Centennial, same thing. If you can get the teams that you face, you're rooting for these teams as well. Yeah. So I feel like for them, they've kind of gotten unlucky with the CIML teams they beat haven't been winning. <laughs> yeah. You're like, dang, we scheduled these guys. What are we doing? Yeah. A couple other teams just on the outside looking in. Sioux City East at 19. Muscatine at 20th. Could be interesting with Ty Kozad. I think obviously lost this past weekend. Needed that one against Linmar. They're going to be another quick border team. They, Cedar Rapids Jefferson, the worst 4-2 and two team, is at 22nd. Their opponent record is 15-39. and 39. I don't think Jefferson's getting into the playoffs just because the rest of their schedule is not great. I mean, they just haven't looked good now against the two best teams they faced. Still, phenomenal year. Not putting anything against Cedar Rapids Jefferson. has been phenomenal. Johnston at 23. Can Johnston get in, Paul? Obviously. Yeah. I think it's... Scary that they're that low. Maybe if you're a Johnson fan, but I wouldn't be stressing. Um, they're the best guys, two and four. Teams. They've got three and zero, I think, in the books this next three weeks. And if they lose one of these games, then I think you're, as a Johnson fan, it's like, all right, I guess we don't deserve it because, I mean, they've got Council Bluffs, Lincoln, they've got Urbandale, and Sioux City East. So that's two of those three teams are above them. That helps. Yeah, yeah, and they'll. Sorry, hate to. Say it to them, but they'll probably win those. Yeah. And go they five to win four. those. They're going to be close at five They're and They're going to be like a 15, 14, yeah. 15, 16, which and is that's... honestly, in my years of covering, I feel like I, like these teams, I want to be able to, like, this is deep. Yeah. This is a deeper field than I think we've ever seen. Yeah. Cause last year, it's pretty top. Heavy. Kind of thing like Johnson a couple of years ago was a 16 C and Sep. And that was just like, I knew there's no way that but like this year they kept it close against them it'd be a little yeah a bit interesting and this is a good team man i mean they're they're good them and centennial are going to be real like you don't want to see them you really yeah. don't want to see them if you're an eastern iowa team you really don't want to see them <laughs> i hate to say it so that's another big one the last one that i think everybody was curious about valley is one in five and they are the best one win team they're above two other two win teams it's close here's the thing though <laughs> 
Valley has the best opponent record, 34 and 20. Oh, yeah. That is the best out of anyone in 5A. I'm not kidding, Paul. They might get in at four and five if they can win out. Yeah, at four and five if they can. But the thing is, they got to beat Ankeny. That's the big one. Have to win. Scary, it. but they'll definitely win two out of three. In my opinion. So keep Water an eye out. Yeah. Life. Keep an eye out. Valley Ankeny, that's the big one. Got to win it if you're Valley. They're going to make so many people mad if they get in at four and five, but they just played a tough schedule. I mean, it, there's no other way around it. And so. they can, to be fair, they compete against the Yes, they did. Team. Northwest, that was a great game. They finally looked like they were putting it all together. That's a good Northwest team, and they're finally putting it together on offense. Yeah, Damon Head right. looking like a dog. Yeah. I mean, he is, he's the forefront of that offense, and Craycraft is going to be huge. They're a good team. I mean, it, they're starting to get things rolling like they did last year. Yeah, not to mention Sepp and Dowling. They competed with them. They didn't yeah. The world over. Gave Sepp a close game, you know? Yeah. So held Valley or Dowling to 14 points. Yeah. It's an odd, odd thing. I also like at the bottom, just if you're curious, out-of-state opponents, Juliet Catholic, who Iowa City High faced, is 4-2. and two. Omaha South, out of Nebraska, is 1-5. and five. And South Sioux City is 5-1. and one. I don't know. Oh, Sioux City North and Sioux City West played South Sioux City. I like that they throw those in. It's just a nice little, hey, here's who you're playing out-of-state. Not that it matters. Mm -hmm. All right, Paul, we'll jump to Class 4A as I pull it over here. I know people didn't want to see it. I know people weren't happy about it. But Gilbert is the number one team. They are 6-0. and Their opponent record is the worst out of the top 10. The only other one that have worse, that's worse than them that I'm looking at right now is Lamar's. They, oh gosh. It's the second worst schedule opponent schedule in the state <laughs> in that's Class 4A. Take that as you will. Gilbert is 6 and 0, 21 and 33 record uh, for their opponents. I will say their opponents opponent record is good, 265 and 221, but the opponents record is what we look at. I think if you're Gilbert, you're happy to be on top. Yeah. Um 6 and 0 is kind of guaranteed. Yeah. Um, especially with no other undefeated teams, but I mean, once they're going to make it no matter what happens. Yeah, they're going to make it no matter what happens. Just how much, no offense, they're going to fall these next three weeks. Yeah. Because they've got a So goal. here's my thing. How do we go about this? <laughs> Gilbert, good team. Great team this year. It's fun to watch. I know a lot of people from Gilbert. A lot of people on Bound went to Gilbert. Sydney went to Gilbert. Blah, blah, blah. Really? They are about to meet some challenges. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the teams they have faced are just – they're good, but they're not great. They will get a major wake-up call against Bondurant this week. And then then it's how do you pick yourself up? Because they're not beating Bondurant this week. They can use that as bulletin board material, sure. But Bondurant is so good, I don't think they're beating Bondurant this week. But then it's like, how do you respond? Because then you have Newton, and then you have Pella. Newton, tough team. Just beat Pella. Pella, beat Xavier. I don't know. It's going to be tough. It's just about how you respond. It's cool to see them at the top. No doubt about that. Mm -hmm. And their three losses will be to good teams. So, you know, it works, I guess. Yeah. But you a win's a win. And a lot of people were mad because they were like, oh, it looks like you can just schedule a cupcake schedule and get in. It's like that's not really how that works because you're going to see teams that went 4-0 and in non-conference, non-district play that aren't going to make it. Also, I it needs to be said – Class 4A isn't top 16. It's top two in your district, no matter what, plus what's left over. Mm -hmm. Take that as you will. There's six districts, so 12 teams, next four out. I'm not kidding. There's some districts that maybe four teams might get in. <laughs> That's how good some of these districts are. I don't have the districts pulled up. If you want to see a couple scenarios, Quinn Douglas on Twitter, Paul, maybe if you want to pull those up, he like did a scenario thing like as of this week of what the teams are in and what's not in. We can pull that up. You don't have to, but that's just a way to kind of look at and base off what you got. So I will say, top, like, do you see it says districts on this? Uh, yes, it does. So you can cut district six. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you see a lot of sixes on there, <laughs> but if you didn't want to look at the numbers on the side, yes. Yes. But top two make it, the rest don't. So top two, and there's four wild cards. It's pretty plain and Jane. So 
That's how it goes. The fight for four is the best. ADM at number two, no surprise. I think that's a good spot. Yeah. Only losses to Lewis Central. It's not like the RPI knows that Brevin Dahl got hurt, <laughs> but yeah. I think that's exactly where they should be, 28-26 and 26 record. Western Dubuque is pretty much right beside them. Look at ADM's opponent's opponent record. Oh, my gosh, 272 and 214. That's the best out of anyone in Class 4A. That's, That's why they have the advantage over Western Dubuque. Western Dubuque is 5-1, and one, opponent's record 28-26. and 26. I hate to say it, Waverly Shell Rock is killing Western Dubuque in the RPI. I guarantee it, because I think the Gohawks are, uh, still haven't won a game yet this year. No, they have, where are they? Waverly Shell Rock? Yeah, no, are like in the, in the RPI. Where are they? Are they a 3A team? No, they're for it. Yeah, there I see him. 31. Oh, okay. They're above one team with one win. I thought they'd be, honestly, <laughs> yeah. like, like... Look at their look at their opponent record. No, it's really show rocks 17. It's ridiculous. Easy 30, 70, 17. 17. Yeah. That's insane. That's the best out of anyone. So Western Dubuque's at three. I like it. Lewis Central's at four. Good spot for them. Four and two. They are the best four and two team. They are above Decorah Bondurant. Do you agree with the Bondurant? I mean, they. Hmm. Uh, it's tough to say. Lewis Central's opponent record: thirty-six and eighteen. Oh no, it, it, they! I forgot Bondurant beat Lewis Central. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's, again, balance itself out. I will say the North Polk you, loss Bondurant will be above Lewis Central. The North Polk loss isn't great for Bondurant, but North Polk's right behind him at seven. Decora at five is really interesting. Twenty-seven and twenty-seven record. Their opponent record: two hundred and forty-nine and two hundred twenty-five. The core is interesting. Their only losses to independence. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I just clearly they're playing people, but yeah, it's oh, a man. interesting team. Yeah, four A man, four and three is so good. Norwalk at eight at four and two. I am surprised they're over Glenwood just a little bit. Again, this is all numbers. Take it as you will. But Glenwood's at nine. Indianola's at ten. Everybody in the top 10 has a at least a positive winning record mm. over their opponents, or their opponents have positive winning records except for Gilbert. Lamar's is a little bit of a different one. They're at 11th at 5-1 and one with a 17-37 and 37 record. Their only loss is to Bishop, or is to, uh, no, who'd they lose to? Oh, MOC Floyd Valley. So a yeah. little bit of a different one. Anything stand out in the top 10 to you, Paul? Um, uh, Norwalk. Yeah, I'm with nice you. for them to be up there for them mentally. Um, I like that North Polk's up there. I feel like they've kind of earned it, played some tough teams. And that Bondurant wins one of the best wins probably in the state. Yep, I'm with you. Other than that, you. I like it, honest. I like that this seems like they've rewarded the teams that played. Like, Yes, yes, I agree. I think – Lamar's is a good spot. That district one is interesting because Denison might not. Eat. Denison should make it. So it should be Lamar's and Denison at the top. But mm-hmm. we should read off district six. <laughs> Lewis Central, district six. Norwalk, district six. Glenwood, district six. Dallas Center Grimes, district six. I mean, <laughs> they could get yeah. four teams in. Yeah, it's wild. District five, ADM. That's a weird, like, how is that shape? We just do that. <laughs> North Polk, right? District 5. Indianola, District 5. Ballard, District 5. Boone, District... I mean, just unbelievably stacked. Marion at 12th. 24 and 30 record against opponents. Tough loss to Western Dubuque this past week. They, they got to buckle down here. They are the second best team in their district. No, they're not. Decora is. So Marion is on the they bubble. They got Decora this week. Okay. That's... That's the deciding game. <laughs> like, got to win that game. That's a crucial playoff game because whoever wins that is almost, I'd say, a lock because they'll be second behind Western Dubuque. So need that game. That is crucial. The rest is going to be fighting for their life on the bubble. So This is kind of cool. I like that for a, like... You like that it's I usually, uh, wild I, like, I usually study, like, 5 yeah, I've seen it. I like Paul that. Um, shook. Yeah, I was seeing this for the first time, it says this is awesome. <laughs> well, it's cool that I could like put an X next to a team's name. That's yeah, cool. yeah. And like in 5A, we just 
it doesn't like you could do that. Yeah. But I like numbers, so you don't know. the top two gets interesting because there might be a second team in the district and they're not that good. But because they're top two, they get automatically in. It's the wild card that just gets so crazy. It's like you're like, am I the last four in? The bubble's a big deal in class five A, but in four A and three A, you are looking at that bubble nonstop. You're like, are we in? Are we in? Are we in? That's the big one. Yeah. The thing is, Central Iowa people would absolutely hate this system. Yes. Yes. It would screw like Valley, for example, or yeah. Johnson, or even Centennial. And how, about, how about this one? Ballard, 3-3, three and three, is over Xavier at 14th. Ballard is 13th. Xavier is 14th. Ballard is over Xavier, Dallas Center Grimes, Dennison Schleswig, and North Scott. I guess DCG has three losses, but how about Ballard? <laughs> like, what in the world? Beat North Polk 7-6 to six and you get yeah, up there. That'll do it to you. Yeah. So technically, here's the problem with Xavier. They have a win over Western Dubuque, which is great. And I, it, it's honestly keeping Xavier in the top 16 right now. But the other thing is North Scott, same thing. But North Scott's below them. North Scott's in 16th at 4-2. and two. You're like, there's no way. But North Scott's at the bottom. It's just, it's crazy to look at. Uh, yeah, North Scott's the most shocking Look at their opponent record, though. 23 and 31. I wouldn't yeah, think. Yeah, but I just feel like they've played good teams. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they're – like, they played Assumption, Western Dubuque, and Xavier. That's clearly not enough. The rest of their schedule must just be terrible. It's Burlington, oh. Waverly Show Rock, yep. which kind of sucks for them because they're, like, weirdly not that bad, but yeah. they just have played the most insane schedule in this yep. class besides, like, Lewis Central. Xavier uh, is in District – Three. Xavier's in. Xavier and North Scott are in. What are we talking about? They're the top two teams in their district. Who's well, the yeah. next number three? Clear Creek and Mana. Oh, yeah. No, okay. they're in. So we don't I have mean, to. I would have expected that even without the whole clinch. Thing. Next week, we're going to come prepared and I'm going to set up the districts how they're set up so we're not just running for it. Then we'll know truly who the wild card teams are. But still, it's interesting to look at. Pella is at, or technically, North Scott's out. It's a typo here. They're seventeenth. Pella is at eighteenth over Newton, who Newton just beat. Pella Xavier win, I guess, is helping them in a way. That win will only help them more. I think that's what maybe gets Pella in. Possibly Newton has to win out. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing really else standing off the page too much for oh, me in this. Wow, one. That sucks for Pella. What? Oh wait, no. I guess they get to play Gilbert. Right now, they're third in their district. Yeah, but they get to play Gilbert. So okay, so they could get who's in the Gilbert. district with Gilbert? Oh, Bondurant. Okay, so yeah, Gilbert could end up being a wild card team. Very possible, from being at the very top to being a wild card team. Could yeah happen. And if okay, how about this? They could lose out. That's already two confirmed in Bondurant and Pella. If they have a loss to Newton. Realistically, wouldn't Newton be in over Gilbert? I don't know, but... Gilbert could not make it, maybe. <laughs> numbers are weird. Six and three, that's a pretty I big... I guess, man, but... Uh, other teams could easily lose in this. You lost to three teams that were the best teams you faced. I don't know, man. Here's what I'd look at. Let me look at Lemars or Lamars. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Lamars. Lamars. Lemar. Uh, let me look like at Lemar. Lemar. <laughs> yeah. They've got Fort Dodge, Denison, and Storm Lake. Holy cow, the schedule is... Denison should get in, though. Yeah. Lamar's Maybe. is interesting. Let me see where my how my Storm Lake Tornadoes get in the playoffs. Denison, Spencer, Lamar's. Who's Storm Lake <laughs> schedule? They've got Denison, Spencer, and uh, Lamar's. Eh, I don't know. You're there. Storm Lake is currently 26, so... I don't know. It it gets interesting, man. There's a lot of stuff that's on the line, a lot of just close stuff. It'll be fun to watch as we move throughout. Boone is that's at 20. Jefferson. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even realize they're 20 first. Yeah. Council I mean, probably a good shot they're not making, I'm assuming, because they probably have a schedule that's – They're also not getting help because the one out-of-state team that they faced is one in five. <laughs> oh, uh, that I forgot that plays a factor. So that, that technically hurts them. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that sucks. 
All right, we'll jump to class 3A. <laughs> this is just a rambling episode about numbers, but that's okay because it's fun. Number one, no surprise, Williamsburg. Oh, what's up? Sorry, I just Council of Jefferson is not making it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the rest of their schedule? Norwalk, Glenwood, and another winner set, I think. Okay, yeah. So, all right, close enough. Rip the dream. Wanted to happen. <laughs> Class 3A, got a couple unbeaten. They're all at the top. Williamsburg 1, Clear Lake 2, Creston 3. You know what's crazy is Creston's opponent schedule is not great. That win over Harlan and Lewis Central isn't carrying them enough in a way. Yeah, those two just have, like, we know those teams are better than. And they have two losses. Tech, Nick. Yeah, they do. So you beat two, yeah. So they beat Lewis Central and Harlan, who have beat each other up. They both have two losses. Yeah. It's just kind of a. But we know game. like those teams are oh, yeah. way They're phenomenal. than two losses. Anyway. That's another thing. We don't see the RPI obviously doesn't stand out. Clear mm-hmm. Lake at two. That's awesome. I think they're they're in. I think it's pretty straightforward. We'll keep an eye here on district. But numbers. then they're worried about how high. Yeah. They've got it's kind so of a tough, tough ending. Clear Lake. Hampton, which is a weird team. Um, Humboldt. We know we're going to make a game just terrible. Yep. And Charles City, which I don't yep. know enough about. I don't think they're that good. Yeah. I don't know. That's it. It's going to be close. That's for sure. Creston at three, Solon at four, the best one loss team, 30 and 24 record, technically better than Williamsburg. They get they get Williamsburg this week. So okay. even if they lose, Solon's going to be fine. They're going to finish second in their district. Uh, they're going to beat Fairfield. They're going to be fine. <laughs> they beat Benton. That was the game. Benton was the big game that they had to get in. So needed that game, and they were able to sneak in. So good for Solon. Nevada at 5, 29 and 25 record. Nevada at 5 and 1. At 5, they are in District 6. Nevada is the top of their district with Harlan in second. And, or excuse me, Creston is at the top of the district. Harlan is third. Nevada is second, technically. That Harlan Nevada game this week has way more implications than you think it does because it's it's either you're a wild card team or you're going to finish second. Yeah. Unless Nevada beats Creston. That mm-hmm. would create chaos if Nevada beats Creston and then Creston beats or Harlan beats Nevada. Creston would still get in and then Harlan would get in over Nevada and Nevada would be a wild card. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's a good district. I. That's a good. They're going to get three teams in. I don't yeah. see your world where they don't. What's up with the District 6? What's up? I feel like District 6 was loaded in 4A. Yeah, it was. <laughs> All right, let's see what you're doing, IHSA. Come on now. Sioux Center. I love this story, Paul. These guys are good. Like, you need to keep an eye on Sioux Center. They're the number one team from their number one district. Bishop Heelan, who they already beat, is number two. The next closest is MOC mm-hmm. Floyd Valley, who beat – who are still yet to – Play Bishop Heelan? I can't remember. Who? Oh, wait, who are you asking? MOC Floyd Valley. I'll double check. Let's check who their losses are too. But Sioux Center, five and one, 26 and 28 record, not great, but they're going to get in because they're a top two team in their district. So you're asking, do they play Sioux Center? Or who is the rest of my MOC Floyd Valley's? They've got Sioux Center, Boyd and Hole, Slash Rock Valley, and then Bishop. So you need, you can afford to lose this week i guess and then beat bishop Heelan. yep they've got central lion is their loss and unity christian is their other loss so central lion's a good loss unity christian is not a great loss but humble is the best two loss team over algona <laughs> humble is four and two that opponent record though 34 and 20 how about humble i don't think they got band meter on their uh yeah, that's true. Come on now. <laughs> that's why they did it. They were smart. Humble yeah. is in District 2, so they are currently behind Clear Lake. Humble still has to face Clear Lake. Wow, they have a hard end. Oh, my gosh. What? They've got Al- at Algona, Clear Lake at home, and then at Webster City. So they didn't get any favors on the back half of their schedule. No. Maybe we need to be talking about District 2. Clear Lake, Humble, Algona, Webster City, Hampton, Dumont, Cal. Are yeah. you kidding me? What in the world? That's five teams that should make the playoffs, realistically. And they're not all making the playoffs. I wonder if there's ever been a district of all 
every team makes it. There's no way. Yeah, there's usually one at least team. That's not I hate to say it, Hampton, Dumont, Cal might be the odd one out here of that district. Yeah, I think they can get four in. I don't think they can get five in. I don't think they. I don't even know if it's mathematically possible for them to get five in. But yeah, because those teams have to beat up on. Each yeah, everybody's gonna beat somebody. My brain hurts. Does your brain hurt? Because my brain yeah. really hurts right now. <laughs> going through all these. Numbers. Yeah, I'm gonna make a chart next week with the districts. We're gonna make this a lot easier on ourselves. Yeah. Independence at nine. I like this Independence team. They're pretty fun. Algona is at ten at thirty-three and twenty-one record. That helps Algona. If I'm in District Two, I'm just I'm gonna make it easy. Just win. That's it. That's all I have to say about District Two. Just win, and you'll be fine. True. We'll, we'll focus on the cutoff when we get to Week Eight and Nine there. But it's just like, just win, baby. That's all you need. Webster City at eleven. Hampton Dumont Cal at twelve. Those two play each other this week. Fun. Bishop Elin is at 13th with a 22 and 32 record. They must have a terrible opponent record. Yeah. yeah. Harlan is at 14th, which I guess you can maybe freak out about, but they can solve it this week if they beat Nevada. Then they're going to get in. I mean, they're going to be the second best team. No need. Like, Harlan, I'm going to go out on a limb. If Harlan beats Nevada this week, they're clinched. If Nevada beats Harlan this week, they're clinched. Honestly, whoever wins this game this week, I think clinches. It's a playoff game. Spot, in a way. Yes. West Delaware is at 15th. Who's in their district? Independence and them. Have West Delaware and Independence played yet this Paul? This year, Paul? Can you check? Uh, I'm checking. That's an uh, interesting district because West or Independence is the best team in District 3. West Delaware is week 8. All right. Circle that game. That's going to be who gets in the playoffs. No, it's not. That's going to be who is the one seed in their district and who's the two seed because the next closest three seed is Waller or three number three district is Waller back in 22nd spot. So it's close. MOC Floyd Valley. We've already talked about them. Just went out 16th Benton at 17th. That lost to Solon was big, but I think they can get in because their opponent record 28 and 26, not great, but this is pretty simple. They are 17th. Grinnell is 18th. The winner of Grinnell and Benton could fight for a wild card spot. The loser is not making the playoffs. It's pretty straightforward. You could go six and three. I don't think you'll get in if you're Grinnell or Benton. I feel like you got to win that. Whoever wins this week between Grinnell and Benton is the team that's getting in as a wild card team. I don't know if this is crazy, but they've been scheduled three times for homecoming games. Benton has? <laughs> yeah. They Clear Creek had their homecoming. Salon or Salon, and Grinnell. Salon, I guess. <laughs> Salon is crazy. Had their homecoming and uh, Grinnell. Grinnell. Oh. Go Tigers. Beat Benton. <laughs> Assumption Paul is 19th. They are in District 4. They're they are behind Mount Vernon. Oh, they're going to get in. They beat Fort Madison. They're going to get in. Even though they're 19th, they beat Fort Madison, which is the next closest team in District 4. So. Assumption is fine. They're just not in the top 16, so they should be in. Charles City, 21. Oh, did you add something? I was just – I'm shocked you're that low. Who? Assumption? Yeah. Yes. But, again, I'm going to reorder this this week. I'm going to put top two in each district, where they're at, and then I'm going to fill in the wild card. Then we'll know better. It'll also be better for a listener experience. But that will really help my brain not – be exploding right now with too yeah. much information because <laughs> my brain cannot handle okay they play them they play them they play them yeah rest of it Makoka to three and three could get interesting I'm trying to see if there's anyone that's like the top team in the district is way above everyone else and the other team is like way at the back Do yeah. you see anything I think district three is the only one I think where's just yeah, district three doesn't even have a Team in the top 10. Independence. Oh, Independence. Independence. Next closest would be West Delaware and then District 4. Same thing. Yeah. District 4, highest number is Mount Vernon. Next closest would be 19th at Assumption. So it's fun, man. We're going to have a lot of fun here the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy. Keep an eye out for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's jump down to our class 2A rankings. Let me pull them up on Instagram real quick. We're just going to kind of go through these real quick. I said it was going to be a shorter episode. Central Lion at number one. 
No surprise. This one really didn't change a ton. Van Meter at number two. No surprise. Central Lion gets Western Christian this week. West Lion is at number three. Monticello, number four. Western Christian, number five. Big game for the Wolf Pack. We'll see how they hold up against Central Lion. Spirit Lake at number six. Kemper Catholic, seventh. Clorinda, eighth. And two new teams to the top ten. PCM is in at number nine. And Mediapolis is in at number 10, two, four, and two teams. Any thoughts on class 2A, Paul? Um, not too many. I like the, the top three. I mean, I just can't wait for Central Line versus West Line. Yeah, that is going to be a lot of fun. And we're yeah. just forgetting Mount Monticello, man. I just feel like they're not being talked about. Yes. <laughs> they're one yeah. Mount Vernon went away. Mount Vernon lost away from being undefeated. Yeah. So. Um, question. So, like, how do class work in these classes? So we're a terrible podcast because I I think it's roughly the same thing, if I'm oh. not mistaken. I think it's roughly the same top two make it. But these go a big way in figuring them out. I know that. So, okay, so don't quote do. me on it, but I think it's usually that. I think it's... They Top. just reorder, like, this is how they decide who plays who. Yeah, but then part of me thinks maybe they take a top 16, but technically they're not ranking 16. So get me back on that. People are going to yell at me that I don't know, but it's 1142 at night. I can't quite remember, but I think it's the district thing again, but I can't be for sure. Hmm. Class 1A, Grundy Center, number one, no surprise, Underwood at two. Sumner Fredericksburg is at three, Paul. I got breaking news today. Very, very unfortunate breaking news. And I'm not joking about this. One of our photographers knows a couple guys from Summer Fredericksburg. Davis Van Sickle is out for the year with a wrist injury. That is a absurdly big loss for Sumner Fredericksburg. He's he wasn't a quarterback that's like throwing for 400 plus a game. Doesn't really throw the ball a lot, but he's a facilitator. He runs the ball well. He can pass the ball. That is a huge loss for Sumner Fredericksburg. Their defense is still very good. They can still hit the running game well, but uh, you just hate to see it. Yep. That's brutal. They wish him the best luck. We wish him the best luck. Davis, you're a baller. We hope you heal up soon, my man. But a tough loss for Sumner Fredericksburg, a team that could make it to the Dome very well and still has a chance, but – Yes. Slips just a little bit. MFL Marmac at number four. Good game between these two guys last week. MFL Marmac just slips up one spot. Not bad. I think the Bulldogs are still fine. They get Denver this week, who is at number five. Denver coming off the loss to Sumner Fredericksburg. Wilton, who is at nine, I think, nine or ten, who is still undefeated, (laughs) jumps all the way up to six. They face number seven, West Branch, who got a win over Regina. So West Branch goes from unranked to up to number seven. Regina drops to number eight after their first loss to West Branch. And two new teams into the top ten. Sigourney Kyoto, only one loss, is to ninth. And Columbus Catholic is up to tenth. Any thoughts about Class 1A? That's a fun class, man. Yeah, fun class. Um, I... There's not much going on that's that crazy. I mean, I, I think I've changed now. I think the top two are locks for the dome, and it's a fight for the next two. <laughs> yeah, that's it crazy. Really is. I agree. But I will say, those top two teams, I'd put them way above the rest of the teams. <laughs> like, yeah, Grundy Center, Underwood are a whole nother level right now. And yeah. honestly, I'd put Underwood maybe as the number one team. Maybe yeah. just saying. Van Meter, man. Van Meter. Meter. (laughs) That's the game I keep looking at. Van Meter's killing teams, by the way. It's not even funny. Like, yeah. Somewhat decent teams, they're just destroying. They're going on the West Hancock mode. Yeah, it's crazy. We know West Hancock lost to you. Class A, St. Ansgar, number one. Really no change here. St. Ansgar, number one. Woodbury Central, number two. Drew Kluander, man. What a dog. He has been balling. Unbelievable. West Hancock at number three, Madrid at number four. Lisbon jumps all the way up to number five. There was some weird movement here despite teams not losing. I don't know what changed yeah. in a week, but I guess they were like, we need to prioritize undefeated teams. Jeff Linder is part of the Class A committee, so maybe I need to message Jeff and be like, what uh, What was the thought process here? But Lisbon is up to number five. Don't have a good strength of schedule. We'll see what happens week by week. Wapsie Valley is at six, above of undefeated ACGC. I think Wapsie Valley's only loss is Denver, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. ACGC is undefeated, and they're at number seven. I know they're not happy about that. Linville Sully drops from six to eight. 
don't really know why. They beat Mount Vernon 23-16 this past weekend. Lake Mills still undefeated at number nine. They have to face Wes Hancock this week. Good luck to the Bulldogs <laughs> in your first true test of the year. Mm-hmm. And then Akron Westfield, who we talked about that beat MMCRU, they jump into the top 10 at five and one. Class A, I think it's the same way. I think top three are locks for the Dome. I think the fourth spot will be the close one that's up for grabs. Yeah. I like Madrid, though. Yeah, they have played a really tough schedule. I'm surprised Madrid's not above Wes Hancock. I get it because maybe eye test-wise they don't match up, but why not? I mean, they they I think they deserve to be three, so yeah, take that as you will. And then we got our favorite class, eight player, where nothing changed because nothing needs to change. This class is amazing. Winfield Mount Union, number one. Gladwick Rhinebeck, number two. Bedford, three. Cam, four. Remsen, five. Don Bosco, sixth. Central City, 7th, Lennox, 8th, Clarksville, ninth, and Waco, 10th. Clarksville faces Gladbrook Rhinebeck this week. Tyler doesn't know it yet, but I'm sending him to that game. Should be fun. See some offenses against each other. That's the best defense Clarksville will face all season. I still think I'll go top three, our lock. I think Bedford is a lock for the Dome. So I'm going to you know. say yes and then throw in. Top three minus four plus five is a lot. There you go. There you go. So, all right. That's all we got for this week of Bound to Talk Football on this Wednesday episode. We doing upset? Oh, quick upset. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, quick upset. Uh, we'll just make it straight up. Okay. You don't have one? <laughs> I'll look for one. My best ability, I'll look for one. Uh, I'm going to go with Nevada over Harlan. That's my upset of the week. I know it's technically not an upset, but you're lying to yourself if you think it's not going to be an upset if Nevada beats Harlan. Give me the Cubs. Nevada over Harlan. Gotcha. I'm trying to find one. Don't think I will, sadly. Don't um, think you're going to find one? going to throw a try box. No, that's so bold. I can't say. No, do it. Do it. I don't care. Go for it. Western Christian. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. It's Don't do that one. one. Don't do that one. Yeah, that one doesn't count. Um, what are one of our games of the week? Lake Mills or Wes Hancock? All right. Sounds good, Paul. Yep. Sure. Go Lake Mills. Gilbert over Bond- <laughs> Gilbert over, over Bondurant? Yeah. They're undefeated. So that means they're Oh, that's not an upset. Well, technically, mine's not an upset. Technically. Bondurant only- upset Gilbert. There we go. That's your upset? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good to know. I I'm gonna throw in because I can. No, I'm not. Never mind. I'm not gonna do that. Good thing I didn't do that. I almost did, but sorry. I just I was gonna pick a five A upset. Thought thought better of it. So what was there's it? only one upset that could happen in five A this week. So you can do your judgment on that one. But was lucky. Well, hey 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 hey. You didn't have to call him out. I mean, geez. I'm sticking with Nevada. Hey, Give me the you, Cubs. You were thinking about it. It's not like you're. Well, I was thinking about it, but I didn't say I was going to go for it. I'm going to stick with my guns. Nevada upsets Harlan. Yes, it's an upset. I see you over there. I see everyone judging me. Nevada over Harlan. Go Cubs. I hope that that's going to put a target on their back. Unfortunately, but hey, Harlan should have a target on their back. They beat Nevada two years in a row, so yeah, we'll take it. As Paul says, go Ankeny, beat wow. Liberty. My hometown, Grinnell, beat Solon, or beat Benton. Sorry. <laughs> Wish everyone luck. We'll be back on Friday for our preview. We thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. Make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all that other stuff. He's Paul Erich. I'm Blake Walker. Thank you for watching. Bound to Talk Football. We'll be back on Friday. See you then. Go Twins.